While I may not have been able to attend in person due to prior engagements at the time of scheduling, that doesn't mean that I'm not ready with information surrounding the Intel Architecture Day that just went down. Gathering in Santa Clara, California, Intel spoke at lengths regarding the future of their designs from stacking to autonomous cars. <laughs> you didn't think self-driving cars were going away anytime soon, did you? Intel also demonstrated some of their in-development 10 nanometer based systems along with their next generation Sunny Cove CPU architecture and even a little sprinkle of dedicated GPU news along with it all. Now what we're doing in this video is a bit of a high level overview of the topics discussed at the event. For a more detailed breakdown of Intel's six pillars as well as each technology, make sure that you follow the link down in the description below or above if you're on Facebook. Starting things off with stacking Lego style, Intel showed off their new 3D package technology with their Foveros, which is to showcase their benefits of 3D stacking of logic on logic designs. Now this is a bit more complex than either 3D die stacking memory like we've seen in the past and is more of an evolution of EMIB introduced earlier this year. Now, while EMIB allowed for a CPU, a GPU, and GPU memory to all be on one package connected by an interposer, their new stacking of logic chips can allow for their package to be built vertically with both CPU and GPU designs in mind. Basically, with EMIB, they were able to mix various nodes onto one package via chiplets allowing, you, allowing for a varied product. You could say have a 10 nanometer CPU die with a separate 14 nanometer GPU core and then again another die that will say 22 nanometers. But you are still space constricted as you have to move out and away similarly the way that you do with a monolithic die in space. But with 3D integration you can take these various nodes and stack them onto base chiplets that are connected on the package allowing for even more complex designs in a smaller package. As more space is needed, you really only have two options, spread out or go up. Looks like Intel is doing both. Intel did spend some time talking about their new Sunny Cove CPU architecture that is slated to be the foundation for Intel's upcoming Xeon and Core Series processors later next year in 2019. The biggest goal of this CPU architecture is to increase performance per clock rather than just clock rate improvements like we've seen in the past as well as power efficiency for general computing. They're also baking in the ability to accelerate special computing tasks like AI and cryptography. The Sunny Cove feature set includes enhanced microarchitecture to execute more operations in parallel, new algorithms to reduce latency, increased size of key buffers and caches to optimize data-centric workloads, and architectural extensions for specific use cases and algorithms, for example, new performance boosting instructions for cryptography. They did discuss graphics, thankfully, but not in as much detail as what I was hoping for. They unveiled their new Gen 11 integrated graphics that feature 64 enhanced execution units. For those keeping score, that's more than double of the previous 24 EUs that are currently being used, and the new iGPU will be packaged in the new 10 nanometer products shipping early 2019. But more importantly noted was their commitment to variable refresh rate stating that a Gen 11 will be featuring Intel Adaptive Sync technology. Okay, so they're not going to call it FreeSync, but we get the picture and are welcome more users to an open standard. But what about dedicated graphics, you ask? They did reaffirm that they're still planning to introduce discrete graphics processor by 2020, and to which I say it's going to be very interesting. Intel did touch on their one API software stack that is aiming to simplify the programming and computing engines across CPU, GPU, FPGAs, and AI, and well, other accelerators, and a public project release is expected to be available sometime in 2019. They also dipped into storage technology with Intel Optane DC persistent memory that plans to converge memory-like performance with a data persistent of large capacity storages. This is something more beneficial to AI functions and data centers. They also showed off how SSD based on Intel's one terabit QLC NAND dies move more bulk data from hard drives to SSDs allowing for faster access to that data. And at the end of it, we had to dive into a deep learning. They went into details releasing deep learning reference stack. This is an extremely performant open source stack that has been optimized for Xeon scalable platforms. The focus on this one is AI functions and deep learning, so if that's your jam, enjoy. So in summary, Intel is stacking chiplets, 
new iGPU tech is inbound, and a dedicated GPU line is still on track. Storage is getting faster and machine learning is only getting smarter. Let us know what you think about the chiplet stacking. Sounds like a good way to get more in less space. And what about the GPU news? Adaptive Sync is good, but who else was hoping for more concrete dedicated GPU talk? Let us know down in the comment section what you have to say about these and more. So this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next video.